Dream Center Church is a restoring place, a place where we make disciples of Christ, teach and train them to live as children of God, and to thrive into who He created them to be. We believe that this is the best time on earth to be alive, to experience the end-time harvest of souls for the kingdom of God. Get ready to be renewed, recharged, and restored to go out and take the gospel to your world. You know, only the truth will make you free. A lot of things you may think would make you free, but only the truth. Jesus said, if you continue my word, he's talking to his disciples, John 8. If you continue in my word, you'll be my disciples indeed. If you continue in his word, you'll be his disciple indeed. You know that we're called to go make disciples. That means these disciples that we raise up, and ourselves included, we continue in his word. If you continue my word, you'll be my disciples indeed. You know the truth, and the truth would free you, would make you free. You know, there were people in Jesus' day that weren't free because they thought they knew what was supposed to happen or they thought what they'd been told or how they'd been taught or religion and they didn't see the truth. They weren't free. And even in his own hometown there, it said that Jesus could there do no mighty works. Could not. Didn't say he wasn't willing. Didn't say he would not. He said he could not. Jesus the Son of God, God in the flesh, was unable to do in his own hometown because of their unbelief. Not their lack of faith, but their unbelief. <clears throat> you, can have, you can have faith in your heart and unbelief in your heart too. Unbelief is not the lack of faith. It's the presence of unbelief. Not believing. And sometimes it, it disguises itself in what you think you have knowledge in. What you think you know can't be changed because what you think you know you won't change. And then the truth comes and you don't see it. We know that happened in Jesus' day, but you know what happens in this day too? The Pharisees and the doctors of the law, all those who were the religious leaders in Jesus' day were, and it wasn't like they weren't looking for the Messiah to come. There's so much the disciples tell us, particularly in the in the four Gospels. <clears throat> and we read it on this side of this happening, on this side of the cross, on this side of the resurrection. But on their side, before the resurrection, before the cross, he told them things. And they totally missed it. I mean, you, you just go look and you'll find that many times he told them, guys, we're going into, this is in the last days of his days. We're going into Jerusalem. And they're going to take me. They're going to kill me. But don't worry. After three days, I'll be back. I'll be raised from the dead. <clears throat> he told them that multiple times. And a lot of times when I'm studying for the Easter message, I talk about that resurrection and the fact that he gave them full warning, a full head, head up, heads up, that they're going to take me. But don't worry. I'll be back in three days. And when he, when he was taken... They were, they were wrought. They were messed up. In fact, the two, uh, the two guys on the road to Emmaus who were walking, and Jesus joined them. He comes up beside them and he says, God, you guys look like you're downcast. What's wrong with y'all? What do y'all look so down for? He, he said, where have you been? Under rock? Don't you know that the great prophet has been killed? Great prophet. Days, of, days, days before, he was called the Messiah. And all of a sudden, it didn't work out like they thought, so they quit believing that he was the one he claimed to be. Even when they were in Caesarea Philippi, which is at the back, it, it, the, it used to be called uh, <clears throat> Bashan. They changed his name, but Bashan meant the place of the dead, the, the portal. There was like an earthly portal on this earth that was like the gates of hell. There are specific places and geographical locations that have significance. Golgotha for one of them, right? And on the mount where Abraham went to sacrifice his son, that's a holy place. And where Moses took off his shoes, 
geographic, but this Caesarea Philippi was a, was a known place near Mar- Mount Hermon, and it's called Bashan, which means the bulls, the place of the bulls. It was the gates of hell. <clears throat> Before Jesus goes back in Jerusalem, he comes to that place as, I don't know, but as if he's taunting the devil. And he says, who do men say that I am? At Caesarea Philippi, at the, this place of the dead. He goes, who do men say that I am? They say, well, some say you're, you're Elijah, some say you're Elisha, some say you're this, some say you're John the Baptist. And they, they kept saying, but, but who, who do you say that I am? And Peter goes, you are the Christ. Not a Christ, but the Christ. Take the religion out of the word. Christ is not Jesus' last name. It's who he was. It was who he was foretold to be, the anointed one. And again, if you look at the Gospels, you'll see that they were talking about the Messiah all the time. It was on their lips. Messiah's got to come soon. They're looking for him. And the religious people, the leaders of the day who should have known who he was, didn't know. And Jesus called them hypocrites. Called them hypocrites because they were in a position to know the truth. They didn't know the truth, but like hypocrites, they act like they knew the truth. They didn't know what they were talking about. Yet they saw themselves as religious leaders. Leaders eat last. Come on, come on. Leaders are servants. Come on. I tell people that work with us in the restaurant business, if you don't like serving people, you don't, don't take a job here. If you think you're something, all that, and you have to serve someone, and, and it's beneath you to do that, this is the wrong business to get into. Amen. Amen. But for life, you better learn how to serve somebody. Come on. I know a lot of times people want to be great men and women of God who aren't willing to serve somebody. <laughs> well, the first test you're going to get is go serve somebody. Amen. If you don't serve them, how are you going to do anything? Look at this. Elisha served Elijah for 20 or 30 years. Dug his latrines, covered him up, fixed his food, washed his clothes, carried his stuff, did everything for him so that Elijah could be who he was. He served 20 or 30 years before he picked up the mantle. Amen. He left his family to go serve somebody. <clears throat> if you want to do great exploits for God, don't think you're going to go from A to Z. You're going to go from where you are. You can, be, you can be called and spoken over prophetically as a prophet. Don't go put it on your business card to get to <laughs> serve somebody because that gifting that's called your calling may not come if you don't get in the position to receive it. Come on, come on. Somebody listen up. There's a, there's a lot of people not stepping into their calling, not because... Uh, God stopped, but many are called, but few are chosen. I don't think he calls everybody, and everybody's lining up to do it. He says, I'm not calling all of you. No. Many don't step into the calling because they're disobedience, and they're not listening to what God said. That's not my message, but it's a good point. If, If you want to do great things for God, then you have to be like Jesus. And if you want to be like Jesus, then you have to totally submit your life to God and do somebody else's will, not your own. Amen. And Jesus was the most submitted human being that ever walked this earth. The most yielded. He did none of his own stuff. He only did what the Father told him to do. He only said what he heard the Father say. He went where God told him to go. And he was exalted to the highest place because he yielded to the Father. Amen. Yielded to the point that God could use him. <clears throat> There's a lot of people that want to be used of God but aren't willing to yield to God. And then they blame God for not showing up. Let me tell you something. There's promises that God's given to us. If you don't see them manifesting, don't blame God. Come on, come on. As Bill Johnson says, the, the problem's on our side of the equation. Amen. It's not on his. Yeah. He cannot. It's, it's impossible 
It's impossible for God to lie. And if he gives us instructions, outside of gifts now, if he gives us instructions that we don't follow him, for him to do it anyway would be lying. Because he's doing something not the way he said it. It's not possible for God to lie. Amen. Amen. Let me put it this way. God didn't restrict himself not to lie. That ain't his nature. He doesn't lie. It's not like he's thinking about lying and chooses not. No, his nature is he only tells truth. And if he only tells truth, he's always releasing freedom. (laughs) Right? If he only tells the truth and everything he tells you, if you receive it, gives you freedom. Truth will make you free. Hallelujah. And he came to those that should have known him to tell them the truth, to tell them who God was because they had it wrong. They were, they were messed up. Their theology was way off to the point that those who, and you've heard me say this before, but it, it bears repeating, and plus I like to hear it. There were those in his day that were religious leaders who everyone looked to to get direction. Be careful that you get direction other than right here. Oh, come on. And if come somebody on. tells you something, go back to this to check it. Amen. There's not one thing that you're going to come across he doesn't give you an answer for in here. Amen. And if you find one, then you may think you found one, but he said, but if you call him for me, I'll answer you. So if there's something you don't know it's not in there, he'll tell you. But it will be in line with his word. Amen. But those religious leaders in his day had spent their life, given their life, in service to God. And they thought they were on top of their game. And when Jesus, the Messiah, who they'd been looking for, is standing in their midst. They don't recognize him. He came, John, the first chapter says, John, he came to those, God came to those that he created and they didn't recognize him when he came. Why is that? Because they were deceived into what they thought they knew. Wow. <clears throat> this is no different than today when Jesus gives us the Great Commission. And I, I was reading the Great Commissions this morning. You know, these Great Commissions are given to the body of Christ. Amen. Matthew 28, Jesus says, he comes and gathers his God. Now, all of this is post-cross, pre-ascension, until he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. And he's standing with them. And he said, all the authority in heaven and in earth have been given to me. Might want to silence your cell phones. All the authority in the universe has been given to me. You know the best news about that? <clears throat> that if Jesus has all the authority, Satan oh. has zero. Come on, come on. He, he, has, he has no authority over you and I, unless through fear or unbelief you yield to him. And Jesus said, don't, don't be afraid or surrender to your fears. Do you know that when you do that, you surrender to your fears? When your fears come, you surrender. You just say, well, have that means what you want. In other words, you yielded to your fears to come upon you. And then God tells us, resist him. Take a decisive stand against Satan and all his works. His works are to tell you things that aren't true. The thing that got us in trouble was the things he told Eve that she believed that was contrary to what God already said. God said, don't eat that tree. The day that you do, you shall surely die. And then Satan comes to her, asks a question. Did God say that? And then he listened to what she said God said. And she said, yeah. We're not supposed to eat of that tree or touch it. The day we do, we shall die. Well, she didn't have it exactly right because all he said was don't eat it. Because if it's one of the trees in the garden, they were supposed to dress it, prune it. For what reason? To produce more fruit. Do you know God's always in the increase in producing fruit? Amen. Sometimes people say, why do you keep growing? your business, and and whatever you're in. I said, if you're not growing, you're dying. Come on. And if you're not growing, you don't just reach a point and say, well, I'm all happy now. People say, well, you know, I don't need 100,000 to live. Just give me 30. Okay, why don't you live on 30, but believe God for 100 and give 70 to the church? Come on. Come on. Selfish. (laughs) Never mind. We tend to settle for the least. Instead of stretching your imagination and your mind for what God tells us. Oh. 
beyond your imagination. Because he's always thinking bigger than they were. I mean, they gave what time. Jesus, all we got is five loaves and two fishes, but what are they among so many? He goes, yeah, that's good. Bring it here. You feed them. We feed them. Yeah. That's not logical what he said. We got five loaves, two fishes. That's it. Sometimes if you look at your wallet or your checkbook or your whatever you use, you can say, well, ain't much there. Or you could say, God is going to bless me. He's always, he, he's my source. And, and look at what you got. And if it's not enough, sow it. Put it into multiplication in the kingdom realm. Amen. Amen. If you give, it shall be given unto you. Mm. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Men will give into your bosom. Thank you, Lord. That's what he said. Be cautious of what he tells us that we don't receive or believe. Because there's things that he's called you to, you'll do without because you don't interact or co-labor with him to bring it to pass. You know, Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he said before he, he physically was gone, he's finished. He's only waiting for one thing to put death under his, death under his feet. But all this stuff is still going on. Yeah, he's already taken care of it. Amen. We, we, Paul said, don't, don't go to heaven and call Jesus down. Don't go in the bowels of the earth and call Jesus up. He said, the word is nigh you, even the word of faith which we preach. The word is his on your lips. The word of faith that we preach. He, he's already showed us how to walk in the fullness of everything he's already given us. Amen. You know that story, and Livia loves this, this story. Brother Hagen talked about when some years after he'd been raised from the deathbed, he's <clears throat> ministering some church, and he's staying in the parsonage of this church. And he woke up, he said, in the middle of the night with the most alarming heart symptoms. He said he knew what they were, and, and these thoughts were just coming to his mind. You, the devil was saying, you know, you, you know, you're going to get healed this time. Don't go back to the doctor. They already told you they can't help you. You're going to die. He said, I was in the house. It was quiet at night. It was a window. I just pulled the, the covers over my head and started laughing at the devil. The devil said, what are you laughing at? He said, I'm laughing at you. He said, why are you laughing at me? Because you said I'm not going to get healed. That's right. That's right. This is one time you're not going to get healed. If the, the thoughts or the things that are coming through your mind are not godly, they're not from God. Come on, come on. And the devil will speak to you. How did he speak to Eve? It wasn't like he just walked up in a suit and started talking to her. I'm not so sure she saw him. <clears throat> the pictures in the old Bible show it, but they also show David, King David, who wasn't yet, who wasn't not, had taken the kingdom, but running up, creeping up to Goliath like he's going to, because he's scared of him. No. Come on. Those pictures sometimes just tear them out of your Bible because a lot of times they're not real. They look like David's timid. No, no. If you read it, it says he ran towards Goliath. Come on, come on. He says, who is, who is this guy think he is? Who is this uncircumcised, uncircumcised non-covenant Philistine to defy the army of God? He, he saw himself as in the army of God. <clears throat> when, when are you going to do that? When are you going to see yourself with a better covenant than David had as being in the army of God? He said, who does this guy think he is? And that, that, that Goliath says, you got to send me a dog to fight with a stick? Oh, yeah, it was a stick and a sling. <laughs> sling was worse than he thought. He says, I'm going to cut your head off and feed your body to the fowls of the air. They said, no, I'm going to cut your head off. David, excuse me, you don't have a knife, you don't have a sword, you don't have anything but some rocks. How are you going to cut his head off? I'm going to take him down, and when he hits the ground, I'm going to take his, his own sword, I'm going to cut his head off. <laughs> and, and the world will know, the world will, this is for you, Sawyer, and the world will know there's a God in Israel. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> and what he said, he believed, and what he believed, he said, and he, walked, he walked it out. He said, God delivered me from bear and from lion. I mean, he went one time and grabbed the lion by the mane and cut his throat and got the lamb out of his mouth. That's a bold soldier. Yes. You know, his faith wasn't in him, though, because he said, God delivered me from the bear, and if God delivered me from the lion, he'll deliver me from this uncircumcised Philistine. Give God the glory. Give God the glory. What was he banking on? What God told him. Amen. Period. Amen. And experience he had of victory. 
That's why he said, don't forget, recall these things that we do every year. Think about this. Every year, think about this. Remember, I brought you out of Egypt because you'll forget what God did for you if you don't remind yourself of it. Wow. Wow. And you'll get stuck in your own reasoning and you'll talk yourself out of what God said. That's a good word. That's a good word. Jesus is, Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. The only time I know he was standing up since that was when Stephen was getting stunned. He said he looked up and saw Jesus standing. I see Jesus standing. I think Jesus stood up to watch this. I, I don't know, I mean, but, but he, Stephen, Stephen saw it. But the Bible says that Jesus is seated and will sit there until his enemies be made his Until. He's not getting up until his enemies have made his footstool. That last enemy, death. When that man and humanity will no longer physically die. Unless Jesus comes, let me tell you, you and I will die physically. Not spiritually, but we're going we're gonna to get to the end of it. And, and I will tell you, I never thought about it much before, but you think about it more when you're about 70 than you when you're about 20. You know, <laughs> you go, you know, I, ain't got, I ain't got three quarters left. I, I'm not in the first quarter, and I'm not in the kickoff. This is, I'm down the road a little bit. The, the clock's ticking. I'm not worried about it. You know, I didn't be afraid of death. Oh, death, where's your sting? I mean, I, I ain't worried about it. He said, I don't, haven't seen exactly where I'm going in my physical sense, but I know what he said, so that's what I trust. Amen. Going to a better but unless Jesus comes, you're physically going to die. And you can believe God for 120 years if you want. He says the days of men are 120 years, and that's what the Bible says. People say, yeah, yeah, but in, in, the, in the book, of, you know, in the psalm that talks about the days of men are three score and ten, and for reason, whatever, there's four score. Next six. So for years we've been believing that 70, 80, you're going to die. Well, that, that's not what he said. And if you read the footnote in that psalm, it said this was for the children of Israel who were in the wilderness who were going to die before the other ones went into the promised land that they could have walked into had they believed God. Amen. Unbelief, not God, unbelief shut them out, Hebrews tells you. Let us therefore fear that you and I don't walk into this rest God's given because we didn't mix faith in what we heard. For the children of Israel heard the gospel preached just like we did, but they didn't mix faith in what they heard. It didn't profit them because they didn't mix faith in what they heard. You know what? He won't do you and I any good if we don't mix faith in what we hear. Come on, come on. Thank you, Jamie. Thanks for the uh, thunderous uh, agreement. <laughs> If what you do with what you hear has everything to do with what happens to you. Amen. Who, do you who do you say that I am? This, that, this, that. And then Peter says, now, Peter was not always the, the, the mellow one, the quiet one, the re refrained one, the genteel one. Peter's pretty wide open. Yeah. You're the Christ. And Jesus looks at him, Peter? Flesh and blood, natural reasoning did not reveal that to you, but my Father in heaven revealed it to you. Amen. Do you know that as Jesus is speaking the word, and the word was spoken to Christ, there was power in that word of God to reveal mm. to Peter through the rhema word, not just the logos, but the rhema, the, the, the spoke, he heard the spoken word of God. Of he didn't mean not have gone, that was God speaking, but he... When you get a hold of the word, sometimes you read and you go, oh, cool, and it just kind of grabs you. Yeah. Like it did us when we first read John 14, 12. Now, look, I was raised in the church, but they didn't tell me that. I'm you going know? I mean, to be careful. Let me just say this. This is my message today. Be careful what you think you know compared to what God will tell you. Because if you think you know it, you can't be taught. Sometimes Good. people think they know something and you can't tell them one way or the other. And you're sitting there, you know the truth, and they're just running it, but you can't tell them because they won't listen because they already think they know. And just to, I've told you the story before, but I was listening to PBR, PB, yeah, PBR, P NPR. Yeah, thank you. NPR, they were talking to the, about these guys who study the cosmos, these scientists, I don't know what they call them. They're not cosmetologists, but they're something with the cosmos, right? And they said, what do you know? They said, we don't really know much. We maybe 5%, maybe 10%. What's out there? We, we don't know much. He said, well, what's the biggest hindrance to learning more knowledge? And I knew he was going to say before he said it. This is in my spirit. But he goes, what we think we already know. Wow. You see, wow. if, if you think the world's flat, 
And people now, there's people talking about flat earthers. They think the world's flat. I mean, I get it, but I don't get it. I can sit at the beach and right behind a rail looking over the water. And if I get myself positioned right, I can see one, the horizon over there on one rail and the other end that way. And they'll look, it rises in the middle and then comes back down. I mean, so it's round. Plus, God said he set the compass on the earth. Let me just tell you, if you're listening out there, like getting knowledge about stuff, not everybody tells you the truth. And they don't all agree, so they can't mean they're all right. You got to eat the cherries and spit out the seeds. And if you really want to know if it's true, then come back to this and line it up with this. And if you can't find it, then set it on the shelf and leave it alone. Because sometimes people can lie to you, and not, inten- not intentionally, but unintentionally. Because if, if I think I know something, and I tell you, and it's not true, then I have just given you death. Because either words are either life and death. There's no in-between. Jesus said the words I speak in their spirit and their life, because they have God's spirit in it, because they are God, and they have life. <clears throat> the words the devil speaks are death. And if you believe him, it ushers in death to you. If you're fighting something in a sickness and you believe the devil more than God, it'll get you. That mean you're going to hell. You just lost the battle that you could have had, you could have won. <clears throat> we don't know exactly why things don't always come out as they should, but I'll tell you one thing for sure. No matter what, God t- tells the truth. Amen. And he doesn't lie. Come on. Yeah, brother, no, when I tried that, it didn't work. When you're not supposed to try it, you're supposed to do it. Because if you just try it, it means you're not, you're just testing it to see. And you're not supposed to test God. Believe him. <clears throat> when we read John 14, 12, I went, oh my gosh. Now these are letters are written red, but just so you know, if, if you wrote down, if you converted all the letters black or red to the ones that are Jesus, the whole book's red because he is the word. <clears throat> he is Genesis to Revelation. Sometimes people say, well, Jesus didn't preach about this. Well, you don't know that because you only got a small part of what he did preach. But this whole word is him in, 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 the, in print. He is the word of God. Before he became Jesus of Nazareth, which was like 2,000 some plus years ago, he was eternally face to face with God as the word. And the word was with God and the word was I don't fully understand the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, but I do believe it. Amen. <clears throat> I, couldn't, <clears throat> I couldn't give you deep detail on the differences or the, I can the oneness of him, but he's the Father, he's the Son, he's the Spirit. He's the Father, he's the Word, he's the Spirit. Amen. It's all him. Now, Jesus was a man that was born. 2,000 years ago, he was, a, as we have been told and we believe, the son of Mary and Joseph. But his spiritual father was God. Amen. And the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. It was not the beginning of the relationship that Jesus or the word had with the father because they were together eternally, face to face. <clears throat> and I was reading something. Let me read this to you. <clears throat> I knew I had this picked up for something. And just something I said, did I? I, make, I said, I get up in the mornings and I, on Sundays when I prepare, I'm looking at the notes I've made on subjects. I have scriptures on subjects about things I want to share. But this one, this is about the love of God. And I, I, don't, I don't really recall putting this together. And I did it in June 16th, which is my sister's birthday. And it's Lightning's birthday today. Yeah. yeah. Happy birthday, Lightning. We'll, we'll, we'll sing it in a little bit. But listen to this. This is Psalms 103, verse uh, 17. But Lord, your endless love stretches from one eternity to the other. Wow. Wow. From one eternity? I thought there's just eternity. Well, there is two that we know of eternity past. 
and eternity in the future. You, you, you can go back in eternity past and never get to the beginning because there's never, there is not a beginning. You can go to eternity future and never get to the end of it because it's eternity. That symbol, eternity, that uh, infinity symbol, you know, it, it happens to be in our logo for the Dream Center too because we kind of took the D and the C, we kind of did them like that, but that is a figure eight. <clears throat> and God's serious about covenant. Did you know Amen. that? Do you know that he came down and cut covenant, which is what men did so that men would believe him? He, he really wants you to believe him. <clears throat> if you don't believe him, it doesn't please him. It hurts him. It grieves him. For someone who never lies to be doubted must be <laughs> like, I can't understand why they don't believe me. But they, when God was talking to Abraham, and God, Abraham kept going, Lord, where's my promise? Seeing I'm going childless. He said, well, I ain't, and I'm not going to call you Abraham anymore. <laughs> which means exalted father. I'm going to start calling you Abraham, which means the father of a multitude. Because the father of a multitude I have already made you. Wow. You made me that? Well, how come I ain't got it? And until you believe me, that promise will sit there null and void, waiting on you through faith and expectation to receive the promise from God. Wow, that's a good word. Come faith on. is a substance of things that we hope. Faith is a substance of things that that word hope means joyful, intense expectation of good. Faith works with what you expect to come to pass. Amen. It doesn't work with what you wish would come to pass. But Abraham's like, Lord, well, where's my promise? See, I go childless. Same thing as Peter. Well, I guess he ain't showing up in here in Galilee. I'm going fishing. And I would say, we're going with you. And they caught nothing. Well, I guess he ain't coming. Day of Pentecost. There were 500 people waiting, right? On the day of Pentecost, only 120 left. Where'd the other 380 go? I guess he ain't showing. I guess this ain't true. They're gone. And they miss what they were supposed to walk into. Wow. Which is the culmination of the new covenant that God had been talking about for some time. <clears throat> and it's a better covenant because now he can come live in us as completed pure vessels through Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Do you understand how awesome that is? He couldn't come live in before because if you just looked at him, he'd kill you. Don't look at me, Moses. The day you do, you die. Yeah, I want to see you. I'm tired of talking to a fiery bush. I want to see your face. <laughs> Moses, you can't look at my face and live. Why? Because there's sin in him. Sin can't stand in the presence of God. Wow. Wow. He said, begin this cleft, and I'll start over here, and I'll cover your eyes with my hand, and then I'll take it off. When I pass you, I'll let you see my goodness pass you by. My goodness wow. pass you by. He did it. So good. He wanted to see his face. Well, you couldn't. But you understand now that and Hebrews tells us all about it and, and, the, and the epistles too, but now we can come boldly yes. to the throne of God and come face to face with our Father. Oh, what happened? Jesus. What happened? We've been cleansed. Hallelujah. Yeah, I know, Brother Noble. There you go thinking again. Yeah, I know, Brother Noble. I, I got a bad past. You did. And on your merits, you couldn't stand in his presence. But on Jesus' merits and what he's done for you as your Lord, your Savior, your King, your Master, your Big Brother. Don't, he, don't think that he had to do this reluctantly. Okay, God. I'll, I'll, okay, Dad. I'll go do it, but I'm, 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 I get frustrated with them people. Ah, because of the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. What was the joy? Seeing us back in fellowship with the Father. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And if you see yourself not worthy because he's made you worthy. See, when you say I'm not worthy, uh, in parentheses, you say, and myself, I'm not worthy, but in him, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. That's the hitching point that people have a hard time getting over to walk into the fullness of walking with God. Because they let their past 
drag them back. And that their past, those lies of their past, will keep them in their past instead of coming to a place of heaven on earth. Amen. Because everything that heaven contains has already been lavished upon us as a love gift from a wonderful heavenly father, all because he sees us already wrapped in Christ. In fact, he saw us wrapped in Christ before he laid the foundations of the universe to the point because of Jesus was a lamb who was slain before the world was ever created. Before the universe. He saw us wrapped in Christ. Christ was our lamb before there was a world created of which he took dirt and created this animal called a lamb. Before there was one that was sacrificed which is a type and shadow of what God already had planned and done because he had declared it and because he declared it, it was finished. Yes. And it just walked out in time. The same way he's gone into your future and prepared a way for you and then comes back to your present and walks with you and tells you, no, 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 no this, this is the perfect plan I have for your life. So listen to me and walk this way because what you're looking for is that path that God's called you to, and you'll think you'll find it in this or that, and you won't find it in this or that. The things of this world do not satisfy. When you, when you got your car, it's pretty cool, but after years, it's still cool, but it ain't like it was when I first got it. Oh, I, 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 want, this, I, want, this, I want this new jacket. And you get it, and you're like, man, that's about a year, you're throwing that thing around like it don't matter, because you're... You got it doesn't satisfy. Let me just tell you, nothing in this natural world will satisfy. He does give you things for pleasure, and there's nothing wrong with that, but don't let that pleasure you think it becomes your God instead of him being your God because it won't satisfy. Come on. I, it, you know, I, I wish I could go fly fishing every day, and then you know who gets to do that is God. Guys who get to take people fly fishing every day. They go every day. But you know what? That's hard work. It's not like, oh, let's be, I want to be a chef. You know what you're asking? It ain't like TV. It ain't like these guys are celebrities and you just walk around and you just sign them on it. No. If the guy don't show up to peel the potatoes or wash the dishes, you've got to do it because you, you're the, it's your responsibility. And, and it's, I call us chefs glorified blue collar workers because it's labor. And, and in the restaurant industry, you, you think it's just all that much fun, but it, it is. But if you don't like serving others, you're going to be frustrated. Because people are going to ask you to do something. We're, we're not slaves, but we are servants. There's a difference. Yeah. Serving the Lord and serving if someone, if someone, mistreats my, if someone mistreats my people, I'll stop them. But if they're asking for service, I'll say, serve them. Because when you take the job as a server, guess what you do? You serve. I mean, that ain't rocket science, you know. And as members of the body of Christ... We're called to be blessed to be a blessing. If you're not a blessing, the blessing will stop. Amen. Because you clogged up the hose and nothing's going to flow through you. And God says, I'm trying to get blessings to people and I'm going through people to do it. But if all the blessings I give you, you hoard them for yourself, you're going to like, well, I can't do it there. I'm going to go find somebody else. I don't think Abraham was the first one God called. And don't think that we're the first ones we're called to do this dream center just now. Come on, come on. We're just the ones crazy enough to do it. <laughs> and, and believe God for it. Thou art the Christ. Peter, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you, but my Father in heaven revealed that to you. And, on, and let me just tell you, miss teaching. And on this rock, oh, Peter the rock? I'm going to build my church on Peter? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. On the revelation of God on man, anointing the Christ, anointing his church, anointing his body. I'm going to build my church that way. Because the new covenant tells you. This is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel. Peter said, God said in the new covenant, I'm going to make my home in them. I'm going to live in them. I will be their God and they will be my people. And I will live in them and I will write my words in their hearts and on their mouth. God living on man. And the power of the church that he's called us to, to go do the things he's done. When you look at the Great Commission and he tells you what to do, hold that up and then say, what's the local church? What's the church doing in America? You go, 
This is as bad as the Pharisees and Jesus. Wow. They, wow. He's trying to tell them what he wants them to do, and they already think they know what he wants them to do. And they won't wow. listen to him because they think they already know. And they're doing their religious duty and thinking they're all that in a bag of chips, right? And they're not doing what he said. That's good preaching. Good preaching. Sin, one thing about sin is doing something God says don't do. You know what's equally as much sin? Not doing wow. what he said to do. Come on, come on. If you're not going into all the world making disciples of all nations, teaching them to faithfully follow every command that he gave us, that he gave the disciples. Let me go back to Matthew 28. Go on, all the authority has been given me, heaven and earth. Now you go in my authority and make disciples of all nations. You know, you didn't tell them to go get them saved. He said, go make disciples of them. There's a difference. We have this tendency in the church of America to get people saved and say, all right, then join this church, sit right there in that chair, and that can be your chair if you want it to. You may fight for it from time to time, but and you'll, get, you'll get ordered with each other because you want your seat. But you didn't get saved to go to church. Come on, come on. You got saved to be the church, the body of Christ. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Going on the world, make disciples of all nations. I say this sometimes. I want you to understand it. I don't care if you get saved. I want you to be a disciple of Christ. Amen. What I'm saying is, my, my emphasis is not on just getting you saved. My emphasis is you being raised up to be like Christ. Amen. <clears throat> That's Amen. making disciples. And he goes back and he says, hey, hey guys, follow me. I'm going to make you fishers. I know you're fishing, but you're going to be fishing men. <sighs> you're going you're gonna to transform lives. Oh, and you can't do it by yourself. Mm-mm. And remember what he's talking to them? Jesus is re- talk, they, they, and he's right before the ascension. Now you go wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father. Amen. Don't go do anything. I want you to go take this good news, the great news of the gospel here in Judea and to the outer riches of the earth. But first go and wait for the promise of the Father which you've heard me speak about. That promise was the infilling of God's Holy Spirit on morning and men and women filled with God and his power and his presence yielded to God just like Jesus did, not like we think we should do, but how he commands us to do it, to be his body on the earth. And Ephesians 1 closing part of that first prayer says, and that which fills him who is being filled by it. And we... His church are his body on the earth and the completion of him that fills all things. That This happens in our neighborhoods. And the completion of him that fills all things with his presence flowing through us. The King James says, and that which filleth all in all. And that first one was the Passion Translation, the early one, said, and we, his church, are his body on the earth and the completion of him that fills all things with his presence flowing through us. And that's in wow. one of my books. But when it comes to the ones translated into the Bible app, it says, and that which fills him who is being filled by it. That which fills Jesus who is being filled. That, the church, that which fills Jesus is filling the church which fills him. Full measure of God. God, yes. on man, doing things man can't do. Anointed of God. Christ in you, not the wish, not the desire, but the expectation of God's glory. Living within you is the Christ. Is the Christ. Well, you can say, well, God lives in me. But what expectations do you have from that? Because that's really what's going to come out of it. Well, I think we spend too much time. So are you baptized in the Holy Ghost? I mean, like we're trying to talk God into come and live in us when he was, he, he, his son died and shed blood and took that blood to the mercy seat in the heavenly, holy, holy, in order that you and I could come in and walk in relationship with Jesus and the Father, just like Jesus had with the Father for an eternity. And don't think, don't think that you have to tarry for this gift. And Hazel came to me and said, Jimmy, this is like 95 or 6 now. She goes, I've heard you've been chasing that Holy Ghost thing. I'm trying to tell you. I'm just here to, I'm going to warn you. I looked, I was searching for 20, 30 years. I'm like, you know what I, I done got it. 
I'm not searching. I've got it. It's been given to us. I've been filled with the Holy Ghost, and I do pray in tongues. Oh, we got the Holy Ghost in us. Hallelujah. And if you look in the book of Acts where it talks about it, this was a second and subsequent step. It could be at the same time if you have faith for it and you know what you're believing God for. Do you know you have a hard time receiving something by faith if you don't know what God says about what you're trying to believe? If you don't know what his word says about it, you can't operate in faith because faith begins where the will of God is known. If you don't know what his word says, you can't have faith for it. You can't pray in faith unless you first know the will of God about what you're going to pray. Amen. Oh, God, I'm, I'm going to pray this. I don't know what you say about it. Well, then you might as well pray a prayer of petition because you don't pray a prayer of faith because you can't. You can only pray a prayer of faith when you know the will of God concerning what you're going to pray. Come on. It really should be a slam dunk because well, if that's what you realize, God, then <laughs> like, like Mary said, let it be unto me according to your word. Amen, I receive Amen. it. But you can't do that if you don't know what he said. Come on. Oh, you never know what God's going to do. Well, then why don't you ask him? That word. That word. That's what the people told me. And my brother one time came to me because he knew we were on fire and we were like causing ripples. And he said, so and so. I said, well, you, the will of God. You, know what the, you don't know what the will of God is. I said, Joy. Oh. This is his will. The will of God. You're right. I don't know it, but I'm going to learn it. I'm going to find out what he says. Bless my brother. I preached his funeral, and I said, by the way, I'm going against religion. I'm not saying it, but I, in, this, in this service that I'm speaking at as one of the speakers for my brother's funeral, I said, let me just say something. God didn't give my brother cancer to kill him. The thief. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Sickness is satanic oppression. <clears throat> God didn't give this to him to teach him something. God didn't need another angel in heaven, so he called my brother home. He could look at him and say, <clears throat> all right, Joe, come on up. You don't know, you don't believe, but I can deliver you from this, but come on. And sometimes he'll just let you come on home. Amen. Amen. We get to go all the time. Sneak in that secret place and come right to the throne of God. Yeah, but your physical body's right here. Yeah, that's true. And faith don't make no sense. No, it don't. But that sense don't make no faith. Oh, that's a good word. Gee, Jesus. Someone ought to write that down. They did. And I took it. <laughs> <laughs> I did, that's not original to me. In fact, let me tell you, I ain't got nothing original. I ain't got nothing of my own. Thank God. I'm on, I am the biggest plagiarist there is. If, whatever, if God said, I'm going to tell it. I'm not going to take credit for it, but I'm going to tell you. Sometimes I preach a good message. You know why? Because it ain't mine. Come on. Come on. And I can brag on it because it's not mine. Because <laughs> if I made up something that sounded good as God, I couldn't even get close. This is a fixed fight, and we win. <clears throat> Bill Johnson. <laughs> I love what Joe Johnson said. I think he said this when we were at All Nations Church. He says, he said, I got some, I love, 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 love the 49ers. He's a big football. He's a big sports fan. <clears throat> he likes all of it. He says, and I record all the games. I only watch the ones we win. I, I, I discard the ones we lose. Because I watch the ones, the ones that we win. Guess what? I know we're going to win. I don't care if we fumble in the third, in the, on the goal line. With just minutes to go, and, and they get it and, and get a pick, or whatever. I go, I don't care. We're going to win. Because he knows before he watches it, who won? You know what this Word of God tells us? That you and I win. Yeah. What in the world do we worry about? Because we win. Victory. Brother Hagin was talking. <laughs> People say, well, blah, 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 but the devil's doing this. He goes, well, what of it? Who cares what he's doing? Amen. Don't, don't give him that much attention. Yeah. Don't give him the time of day. Come on. Come on. Ignore him. If he's harping in your ear, start speaking the word of God back to him. Come on. Come start on. praising God. This kind of praise has the power to shut Satan's childlike praise has the power to shut Satan's mouth. Amen. Amen. And he's always <clears throat> Good preaching. I will tell you I just don't live this easy life that you may think I do. Like, I come up here and just expound all this wisdom on you. Sometimes I'm sitting there here quaking in my shoes. What am I going to say today? I'm just like you. 
But Jesus did tell us one thing. When you get up, don't worry about what you're going to say. say. Holy Spirit will tell you what to say. You don't have to worry. Don't, don't come in here. You can do your homework. Study to show yourself and prove. So that when it's in there, you can pull it out. When he says this, but if, you don't, if it's not in there, you can't pull it out. Because he's like, has he been studying anything? I'm trying to get him to speak these things. and you got to study. But then you let him flow. Amen. Amen. He's the leader and the source of everything needed in the church. Amen. Not the local church, the body of Christ. Amen. They're not necessarily one and the same. All of us in here who were born again are in the body of Christ. Amen. Those of you who are not born again, I love you, but you're not in the body of Christ. You don't, just because you come to church does not make you a member of the church any more than if I go over to Bossy's and eat a chicken sandwich, I become a chicken. <laughs> we become members of the body of Christ because we do what he said by faith. We say, Jesus, yeah. you are Lord of my life. Amen. I can look at you and tell you if he's Lord of your life or not. Jesus can't do. He says, he says, what good does it do you to call me Lord if you don't put it into practice? What I tell you? Come on, preacher, come on. Because if if I'm the boss and I walk in, they're not listening to me. Guess what I'm gonna do? Get new and hire new ones until I find the ones that'll listen. God's gonna do the same thing. He's gonna find people that believe. If you don't do what He says, He's not Lord of your life. He says, "What good does it do to call me Lord?" You can go. Jesus is Lord. (laughs) Is He Lord of your life? Oh yeah, He's Lord of my life. Then why are you tipping and dipping? James says, you say you got faith? I can tell you got faith by what you do. Oh, faith that needs to Don't think that these things that you do buys you anything. It's a result of what you believe. You can't go do works to get into heaven. John Wesley, the founder of Methodist Church, went 20, 30 years trying to earn his way into salvation and church. But guess what? He couldn't until he finally found out that you get born again by faith. And then you know, he, you know what he said? Preach faith until you get it. And then when you get it, preach faith. Come on, come on. Preach faith until you get it. And then when you get it, preach faith. Preach faith. <laughs> preach faith. Mm. Where in the world are we yet? Caesarea Philippi. In the presence of this portal into hell, the gates of hell. He said, flesh and blood didn't reveal, didn't reveal that you, to you, Peter. But my Father in heaven revealed it to you. And the gates of hell were not prevailing. He declared, I'm the Christ right at Satan's door. Wow. Wow. He's like, it's about time. Come on. Let's let's fight this thing. And Satan thought he had it. (laughs) They were rejoicing. They got him. They killed him. They take him into the bowels of this earth. In the bowels of this earth, it said he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Jesus went down there standing in faith in what God had told him, what the scriptures had proclaimed, that God was going to raise him from the dead. But you ain't never faced a trial like that where you are in the midst of Satan's camp. Believe in God to raise you up out of there. Wow. wow. Let me just tell you, the promise from God was to raise him. What if Jesus didn't operate in faith? He wouldn't have been raised. Because the promises of God, the outcome of faith, and depend entirely on faith. For Jesus to be raised from the dead, he had to believe God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, boy. He had, you ain't never been in a spot like that where you had to believe God in the worst possible situation. And we don't understand the fullness or the darkness or the calamity that he was in in the midst. And they are just mocking him. And he stands up and begins to preach to those in paradise. David, all of them. He said he he grabbed Satan by the scuff of the neck and just started marching and preaching. And then King David and Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all those patriarchs of old who had been sitting in that place called Sheol, which is the place of the dead, they were raised up with him. And they came and walked this earth for 40 days until they went on their ascension into heaven and on the, it's like they, they took the elevator up, just said, hold it right here for a minute. And they got off, began to walk around the world. And then Mary came to grab, no, no, don't grab me yet. I, I, I got to go to the, I'll be back. 
goes into the heavenly. Hebrews tells you he pours out his blood on the heavenly holy of holies, the mercy seat of God, of which the mercy seat in the temple was a replica to be built just like that. It wasn't the one, because he would have walked in there and done that. No, he took his blood to God's mercy seat in heaven and then came back and said, now handle it. I will tell you one thing. If there ever was a stud bolt, it was Jesus. He was no wuss. He was no wimp. He's no meek. I look at them pictures in our white church growing up, this white guy with blue eyes and long hair. He like this. He ain't that. He was a lion of the tribe of Judah. He's the firstborn among many brethren. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. And he's our mighty God. God himself. God himself, because of his love for you, came into this earth, live as a man to pay the price to bring you up, to fill you with himself. Hold it, hold it. Why would anyone reject it? Of all he's done, the thing that we're looking for inside our heart is what he's done, the fulfillment of it, so we can come to be who he created us to be, the sons and daughters of God. Hallelujah. If you think this kingdom is a wimpy kingdom, you got another thing coming. Come on, come on. God is the Lord of the Sabbath. <laughs> the commander of angel armies. Hallelujah. And he sits on his steed. He looks to his right, he looks to it's just flooded with warriors from heaven. And if he flicks his finger, they go into battle and they always win. And he's a good God. He's the commander of angels. He's not the, he's not the Lord of the Sabbath. Y'all, y'all are shouting louder than I can shout. He's the Lord of the Sabbath. The commander of angel armies. He rules and reigns. <laughs> and when God raised Jesus from the dead, he said, all right, son, you take it. You're in charge of it all. He's over every principality, power, rule, and darkness. And he's our king. He's our Lord. He's our big brother. And because of the great love he has for us, he calls us to co-labor with him. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I wanted to just lift up Jesus' name. I don't ever want you to think that as I'm trying to teach you who God's called us to be as members of the body of Christ. It has anything to do apart from him. (laughs) It's all about him. Let me see if I can find this. Well, on the meantime, on the way, for the kingdom of God, the kingdom realm of God comes with power, not just simply impressive words of man. The kingdom of God comes with power. From the moment John the Baptist stepped into the scene until now, the realm of God's heaven's kingdom is bursting forth and passionate people take it by force. The moment that John the Baptist stepped on the scene, the kingdom of God was being released and passionate people grabbed it to be part of it. You need to grab a hold of this. This is a word that God gave us. This is all my notes. It all works together. Just stitch it back when you get home. (laughs) Isaiah, Bishop, in our early, in our first year, Bishop called me one Monday morning and said, Jimmy, I've been praying. And the scripture God said is, y'all, which is the body of Christ. If, if anything's for us, it's for the body of Christ. Amen. We may have different callings in the, another church in town, but we're on the same team. You know, everybody in the army doesn't do the same thing. If they did, there wouldn't, there wouldn't be enough people to do, to win. You have to have some that are battalions, some of them that take boats, some of them that stay at home and, and build the ammunition. All, all the people come together as members of the body, but he goes... Isaiah 60, the Lord's been speaking over and over in my spirit this morning. And it's first written to Jesus, but it's also written to his body. Arise and shine because your light has already come. We read that like one day the light's going to come. No, arise and shine because your light has already come. He's talking to Jesus and his body on the earth, the legislative assembly of God's authority and rule and reign 
lies in the church, not in the church building, not in the doctrine of the halls of denominations, but in his body Amen. of believers who understand authority and submission and power and kingdom revelation. And he speaks to us. He speak, he, he, he's going to hold the church responsible for the state of affairs when we get there. And he said, arise and shine. Because your light has already come. Let me, let me see if I can read this. This is from the Passion Translation. Rise up into splendor and be radiant. For your light has dawned. And Yahweh's glory now streams from you. Wow. He's talking to us. Look, look carefully. Darkness is blanking the earth and deep darkness covers the people of the nations. <laughs> is this written for today? Wow. Darkness covers the earth and deep darkness the people. Look, look carefully. Darkness covers the blankets the earth and deep darkness covers the nations. But Yahweh's arises upon you and the brightness of his glory appears over you. He's talking to the church. Jesus is the head of the church. He is talking to Jesus, but Jesus is not complete without his body. What good is your head without the body? What good is your body without the head? Wow. Wow. He's seated. He's relegated to the affairs of this earth. His church, which is his body. And he leads that body for those who listen. For those that have their own agendas, they ain't even... That's why it's a remnant. Because there's a lot of people that look like it. I don't want to follow the things of men. No. I don't want to follow the doctrines of men. I don't want to follow the denominations of men. But I can figure there's only one group, one body, one source, one spirit, one new man. Woo! It's the body of Christ. Black, white, Jew, Gentile, male, female. Whatever, old, young, fat, skinny, what? yellow, green, what? whatever. That part, all that ethnic hatred has been dealt with by his precious body on the cross. And we are one body in him. And he's speaking to his church. Amen. He's trying to speak to everybody that may walk into a church. But his church knows that God speaks to them and they can speak to their God and they can take what he says and walk on it even when there's nothing to walk on. Wow. Because his wow. word is true. Yeah, this word preaches. <laughs> Yahweh's arises upon you and the brightness of his glory appears to you. Nations will be attracted to your radiant light and kings to the brightness of your glory. This don't appear to be the most fun time to live. I'm seeing things in this world that if you told me in high school, asked me in high school if I, this stuff would happen, I said, well, not in this country. Don't think it's a Patri uh, like a, 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 what do you call them? Democrat, Republican. It's not a, a, a party. There are two parties. It's the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of darkness. Woo! Some may yield more than others to the kingdom of darkness. And just as, it just as we can and should walk and represent his kingdom to the point like Jesus, they look at us and say, you're walking with God. Those in darkness can walk with the devil and you can see it. But Jesus said for us to preach the good news to them in darkness. Amen. So that their darkness will lift and they can see truth. Whoa. They're not listening because the church has been impotent and, and without power. <clears throat> and we look like everything else out there. And the church is trying to be everything to everybody. <laughs> Let me tell you something. That ain't what this word says. This word will separate father from son, daughter from mom, brother from brother. Wow. Because we will draw lines and we're going to follow. Not, not a party, 
but a kingdom. I would tell you to go vote. You can't sit on the sidelines and do nothing and then complain about it. You have no right to. And there's, there's junk in most camp. But you find out where God stands, find out what God believes in, and find the one that's closest to that. But don't think. God can use a mule. But you need to know the things of God and His kingdom and how it operates. <clears throat> We're hypocritical if we sit in this day and look back and condemn the treatment of slavery and that in our day ignore the murder of innocent babies. That's wow. A wow. Yes, that's wrong. But let me tell you something. This is happening in our, in our society. In our day is worse. The slaughter, innocent slaughter, of those that God knew before the foundation of the earth. He's going to hold us accountable for it. Don't be quiet. Stand for what's right. Speak truth, even if it costs you. There's two or three other things I can pull out. And there's an abomination to God. But just like them, we were once walking in the darkness and and living in the impulses of our flesh just like that so don't act like we're all that and they are not pray that they he didn't say come condemn he says go preach the good news so that those that are lost will see the light and pray that your words are yielded come from your father yielded to him so that he can speak through you to change lives in this world and be the church. This light was spoken, this Isaiah 60 was spoken over this church, over this ministry, by our Father and the Lord. He said, this is y'all. Let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and give glory to your Father who's in heaven. <clears throat> I got to read this one thing. This is my last thing. <clears throat> and then Brother Blue will usher you through quickly so he can make the football game. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Oh, boy. It's all about Jesus. Amen. You got to find my notes. God is satisfied to have all this fullness dwell in Christ. And by the blood of his cross, everything in heaven and earth is restored back to himself. Back to the initial intent to be restored to him once again. God's plan was to bring us back from the darkness that we lived in. Which, and he ends it this way. Christ is our message. We preach to awaken hearts and bring every person into the full understanding and truth. It has all become an inspiration. It has become an inspiration, Paul says, and passion in ministry to labor with a tireless intensity with the power flowing through me to present to every believer the revelation of being his perfect one in Christ. (laughs) Let him deliver you from darkness, but don't stop there. That's like coming out of Egypt and walking in the wilderness for 40 years. When you're supposed to go into the promised land, you are supposed to now co-labor with God in the fullness of his body. And I really intensely, I'm over here, I'm like, guys, you need to come in to be the church. But never let it be thought that we exalt this above Jesus, who's the head of it all. 
But sometimes we need to know what he's called us to and eliminate your past from your, from its, its ability to get into your mind until you're not worthy of that. Because no, for sure, don't make any, don't make any many bones about it. We're not worthy. But by his grace, he made us worthy. Amen. And then come be, always call us to be. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have cancer in your body, or someone in your family, or somebody you know has cancer, I want you to stand to your feet. We're going to exercise and do what he said, and then Pastor Blue is going to close us out. <clears throat> Jesus told us to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out friends and lepers. Go read the go read go read the Great Commission. We're called to lay hands on the sick and shall recover. We're supposed to do the works Jesus did. We're filled with the Holy Ghost and power. We speak in tongues. We cast out devils. If we drink any dead anything, it won't hurt us. If rattlesnakes get us, we sling them off. Because God lives in us. Amen. And he said, believers lay hands on the sick. Minister healing. Go tell people the kingdom of God has now come near to you. And I'll tell you, the kingdom of God is right here at hand. Amen. Amen. Don't look to Jimmy. I can't heal a gnat's wing. But him who lives in us will move through us and through his words and radically transform your physical body and your mind. First with cancer, if you have cancer in your body, stand your feet. Or if you know somebody or someone in your family, we're going to speak specifically to that cancer and tell it to die and get out. Amen. And then we're going to pray for the sick. Brother Blue, I'm, 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 I'm over. Sorry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, I'm over. Huh? Hallelujah, I got to preach to you. First Peter 5, verse 8 says, Be well balanced. Always alert, because your enemy, the devil, roams around incessantly seeking his prey to devour. Don't let him do that. Take a decisive stand against him and resist him with your most holy faith. Amen. Amen. Resist the enemy. For nothing shall by any means hurt you. He calls us to tread on serpents and scorpions and give us the authority and power over all the power that the enemy possesses. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Any other sickness, any other disease you want prayer for, stand up to. We're going to do cancer first. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the authority vested in us is power, his power residing on his body, on the earth. We curse cancer in the physical bodies of the people's names that we call out right now. Now you call your name out or who you're standing for. John, Carolyn, Bill, Mary, Wesley, Jim, Gamash, Lee, John, Cameron, Cameron, Shamel, Maureen, Kathy, Natalie, Sam, Lorna, Don, Taylor, Adora, I mean, yeah, Adora, RM, Phil, and Lee. Cancer in these bodies, we're speaking to you and command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to die. In the name of Jesus. Loose them and let them go. <clears throat> if you are demonic, loose and let them go. Sometimes cancer can be totally physiological. Sometimes it's demonic. We're not, we're not leaving either one to roost. Furthermore, if there's any cancer in this room, unknown and undetected, we don't have to wait till it gets too big. We curse you. Every cancer cell within the sound of my voice, even those not standing, we command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to die. We declare this is a cancer-free zone. And every other sickness, every disease, any kind of torment, any kind of physical ailment, any kind of uh, disorder, any kind of mental disorder, ADHD, all that junk they make up, it's below the name of Jesus. Amen. And we speak healing and peace and the power of God's kingdom realm over you. And we release the healing power of God over you in the, the, in the way that Jesus sent them out and said, release let your peace come upon them and declare to them the gospel, the good news of the gospel of the kingdom that you don't have to be sick. So we speak healing over you from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Any kind of mental issues, any kind of uh, abnormality, any kind of uh, schizophrenia, any kind of bipolar, any kind of mental issues, dementia, any of that mess. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we speak the healing power of God of you and the Holy Spirit that resides in us comes upon you 
and changes you in the yes. name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we'll forever give you the praise and the honor and the glory because that is you, not us. We cannot do it. But, but with you, nothing is impossible. And Father, we give you the praise and honor and glory for all things that are wrong here today and in this message as it goes out through the internet. Let your light so shine. And we lift up Jesus' name and you'll draw all men to yourself. We declare that in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Amen. Thank you for being here with us on The Voice of Healing. When you're in Charlotte, North Carolina, join us for our 10 a.m. Sunday morning service. Our website, restoringplace.org, has all the details on how to find us. While you're on our site, check out ways you can volunteer at the Dream Center. Need someone to answer questions about us or pray with you 24-7? Call our prayer line at 704-246-4595.